morning, Emily. I am just pulling it up on my computer so I can make sure everything is framed while I'm doing this. Good morning, Stacy. Okay, so I know I normally start these off with like music, but today I just want to like go straight into it because I'm actually excited. Um, it's been forever since I've last done a live video, a live Bible study session. I don't even know when the last one was, but it was a while ago. Um, so yeah, I am a little nervous because it's been a long time and you might hear noise in the background. My fiance is here on the bed <laughs> and then my brother and his girlfriend are in the living room and will be waking up soon. So if you hear any noise besides me, I apologize ahead of time. But, um, good morning, Tiffany. Welcome if you're new to these live sessions. I do them very much in a relaxed kind of way. I'm going to talk through how it goes and then we're going to pray in and then we're just going to start and probably spend an hour. It's not a lot. It's only 23 verses. Um, I am going to be using the study notes that I wrote. Um, you guys can get them from the blog. So I'm going to be using chapter one's notes. We're going to dive in. Good morning, Destiny. Yeah, see, my brother just woke up. <laughs> um, can you guys hear me clearly? I just want to make sure the mic is set up properly. Okay, great, great. All right, so where do I even begin? Okay, so the pins, you guys know me know that I use. Um, Happy New Year. Uh, that, I should have said that first too, but Happy New Year to everyone. <laughs> um, but yeah, so today I'm going to be using the Bic Round Stick pin, and this is a fine point. Um, it's just a basic pin that you can pick up anywhere. I just felt like using this today. I, I want to go back to using blue ink pen instead of black ink just because I feel like black ink, um, my eyes get kind of crisscross at times. So I'm just using this pen today, but I normally use a 0.7 or 0.5. I believe this is a 0.8. If I'm not mistaken, you can get these on Amazon in a pack. You can definitely buy them from um, Walgreens and Rite Aid. They normally come in a medium point which just says M, but I got a hold of a fine point somehow. So yeah, I'm going to be using that. To do my highlighting, you guys know I like the Crayola Super Tip markers. I use the Sharpie Smear Guard highlighters, the ones that don't have the little clip on them. Um, I use the Crayola Twistable pencils, and I am obsessed with my Zebra Mile Liners. I really, really love these like so much. And I always use the um, kind of fine point on them. So I have all of that sitting here in front of me in this little pencil holder. I have two post-its for today just in case I need to write more notes, which I probably will because this is not going to be a lot of space um, for me to do chapter one notes. So I just have these like rainbow post-it notes I got from, where did I get this from? Walmart. I think this is like the emoji style Walmart ones. Good morning, Tam. Good morning, Nicole. And then I just have these, like, post-it note ones here. Um, I'm, what I'm probably going to do is actually, like, insert paper inside here, kind of like how I did. Did I do it in here for John? No, I didn't do it. Did I do it? I'm sorry, you guys. I'm just looking to see. Yeah. Okay, so kind of like how I did it for um, John. I'm going to actually probably insert some paper inside so that I don't have post-it notes all over the place. Because when I did this in my new King James, actually, let me grab that real quick. Okay, so this is the new King James uh, Journal of the Word Bible. Hopefully you guys can see that. 
I have the camera zoomed in. But when I studied Ephesians in here, I had post-it notes everywhere. <laughs> like, I have post-it notes literally everywhere on the back. It, yeah. So I'm probably going to insert some pages once this live is over. Good morning. Is it Soraka? Let me know if I'm saying it right. <laughs> but good morning. Um, also, I have a question for you guys. Are you guys better interested in me doing these lives at 10 a.m. in the morning? Um, or would you prefer me to try doing them at night around 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time? Because I feel like the mornings work best for me, but I can also do Friday evening since my son will be gone um, and I'll be in the room by myself. So <laughs> let me know. And again, I apologize if you guys hear that sound in the back. But um, yeah, let me know. So the Bible journal that I'm using today is the single column journaling Bible from ESB Crossway. Um, yeah, this is just the one I've been using for a while. We did Ruth in here. We did Esther. We did some parts of John. We're going to do Ephesians. And then after Ephesians, I am going to transition back into using the New King James just because I prefer that translation. And I feel like that translation um, is the closest to the King James as well as it doesn't take out scripture. I do find that some of these translations take out missing scriptures. And I'm going to have a video on that on my channel soon. But, um, yeah. Okay, so mornings. Okay, that's fine. We can stick to mornings. Mornings work best for me anyway. <laughs> Alright, so um, I'm going to quickly pray us in. You guys know how I am about prayer. I get shy. I'm not the best at praying out loud, so this is going to be like the shortest prayer ever. Okay? Okay, <laughs> so let's just pray. Father God, we thank you for waking us up this morning. We come to you today just to give you glory and honor, Father God. We thank you for bringing us into a new year, a new time to study, a new book to study, God. I'm asking that you use me as your vessel to teach your word to your people, Father God. I'm asking that we're able to gain something from this study today and that we are able to apply it to our lives. Amen. Very simple and short, you guys know. <laughs> As we go back into doing these studies more often, I'll get better at doing them because it's been such a long time. But, um, okay. Thanks, Nicole. <laughs> All right. So we're going to dive right in. Um, everything, can you guys see properly? Because, like, I have my phone in front of me, but I'm also looking on the computer. So I'm just trying to make sure everything is fine. And I know that the autofocus on here is retarded. They need to fix the um, Facebook Live autofocus. I don't like it because it goes in and out at times. So let me know. But um, I'm going to dive in. Uh, and before I do that, for those of you who are new, again, um, the way that I do my kind of method of studying is more of a journaling style. Um, and I do it kind of in a few steps. So the first step that I do is I normally will read the chapter or the passage through. So in this case, I would do it paragraph by paragraph, reading the paragraph through. So there's only, what, four paragraphs? Technically three, but four. So I'll read this first section first. And then after I read the first section, I'll then go back in and circle words that I want to define. And this, these are basically words that I know or I don't know. Um, and that's because I like to look up these words in the original language. And because this is in the New Testament, um, Ephesians was originally written in Greek. So I would look up the definitions in Greek and sometimes also in English. After I do that, I would go back in and underline box or whatever the case may be parts of the verses, parts of the scriptures that really stand out to me that I want to take notes on. Once I do that, I will take my notes and then I box everything and add color to make it pretty. Um, I feel like adding color, one, makes it pretty and fun, obviously, but also it just opens up. I'm trying to see which book is this. So it's kind of like how we did John. Um, I just, I feel like it makes everything look easier not easier. It makes everything um, easier to look at, rather, and I can pinpoint where my notes go instead of just having a bunch of black pen with arrows and being confused. So. I'm sorry, guys. I'm just looking at the comments. Oh my god, I don't want to butcher your name. Oh my god. 
Um, okay. Okay, thanks, Stacy. All right. So we are going to just start. So I'm going to move this out of my way first. I have my notes here in front of me to read from, so that way I know what's going on. Um, and we're just going to start. So Ephesians chapter 1, verse 1, it starts off with greetings. So Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, to the saints who are in Ephesus and are faithful in Christ Jesus, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So for this, um, I definitely want to circle saints because I wanted to find that Ephesus and a lot of the times I will circle the, the names of locations and people just because I find that their names always mean something that's relatable to who they are um, so that's just that what else do I want to circle um, faithful and if you guys have any comments, questions, any thoughts of what you picked up if you read it, the read the chapter ahead of time, definitely just put them in the comment section and I'll always check them and we can always discuss it. But um so yeah, the words I'm going to define are saints, Ephesus and faithful. Let me bring my paper closer. And again, sorry about that noise. <laughs> okay. So the Greek word for saints is Hagios, and I'm probably butchering that, so I'm going to show you guys. Um, if you guys have the notes, it's on the Greek definition on the fifth page, page five. Um, the Greek word is Hagios, I'm probably butchering it, but it means set apart for and by God. So I'm basically just going to write that definition. And where do I want to put that? Up here. So... Set apart for and by God. Gonna box that. And then we're going to draw an arrow. And you can make the arrows fun. I like to have fun with my arrows every now and then. I've been doing this a lot more lately. So that is that. Um, Ephesus is basically the coast in, I'm sorry, it's the coast city in Asia Minor. It was the capital of Roman province of Asia. So let's go up here. Coast city in Asia. Capital of Roman province. And then faithful, the Greek word for that is pistos, and it basically means trustworthy, believing, or reliable. So I am going to write that, um, I guess right here. And if you wanted to take it further, I would even um, circle the words apostle and Paul and define those as well if I wanted to. Um, Believing and reliable. Okay. And now we're going in with the color. So I am going to use this Crayola Super Tips for Ephesus. Nope. Yeah. Ephesus. This pink one for faithful. And this peach for saints. And definitely have fun. It doesn't have to be in a like specific manner. Have fun with it. That way you're not stressed out and you're relaxed while you're also studying the word of God. So now I'm going to go back to verse 1, and I'm going to underline by the will of God, 
because I feel like that's important. So basically, this is telling me that Paul was chosen and commissioned by God and that he wrote this letter to them under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit and that his words carried the authority of God. So that's a few things. So the first is that he was commissioned and chosen by God. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Um, two is that he wrote under inspiration of Holy Spirit. And three, his words carried God's authority and your handwriting does not need to be neat <laughs> as long as you can read your own handwriting um, let's go and no I want to use a Crayola today so I'm gonna use this Crayola super I'm saying super tips the twistable colored pencil I'm gonna underline that box this and trace the arrow Tam um when I'm using my journaling Bible I don't color code I just take whatever colors just so that I know where my notes are but in my other Bibles I do tend to color code depending on what the Bible is for because I use my Bibles for so many different things so I definitely do color code in my other Bibles um but my notes no they're not color coded um they're just random pretty much whatever color I feel like using I use um just to make sure that I can correlate the note to whatever it is that I circled or underlined but I do know some people who do color code their notes um I just for me I don't care to do it just because I don't know. I just find it more fun and relaxing just to grab colors as I go. Um, however, I do have a new Bible that I'm going to try that in. So, we'll see. <laughs> Alright, so now I'm going to move on to verses 3 to 10. So, we're just going to read it through. Um, and this section here, verses 3 to 14, are basically called spiritual blessings in Christ. So, I'm going to start off with verse 3. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love, he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, with which he has blessed us in the beloved. Verse 7, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace which he has yeah which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight making known to us the mystery of his will according to his purpose which he set forth in christ verse 10 as a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in him things in heaven and things on earth so now i'm just going to circle words i want to define and oh no i forgot a word <laughs> I forgot two words, actually. So I'm going to go back to verse two. Sorry about that, guys. I'm going to circle grace, and I'm also going to circle peace. So I know I just read verses three to, t three to ten, but I forgot to circle grace and peace. So I'm just going back to verse two for that. Um, so the Greek word, if you guys can see this, the Greek word for grace is charis probably saying it wrong <laughs> but um it means free unmerited favor of god it's an extension of kindness translated into action that releases his enabling power into your life and then peace i'm not even going to attempt to pronounce that word but that's the greek word right there and it basically means dependent on his presence fulfillment from god so i am just going to write that um where do i want to put that mm. So, grace is free, unmerited favor of God, it's an extension of 
of kindness translated into action that releases his enabling power into your life that was sloppy <laughs> but that's okay and then peace we're gonna write that here in this corner Dependent on his presence. And I'm also going to write rest as well. Rest in him. I'm going to use this green for grace. Mm, I'm going to take this pink here for peace. Just make sure there's no more comments. Okay. All right, so now going back to verse three. Um, the first word that I want to circle is blessed. I'm going to go to verse five and circle predestined. Adoption. I believe redemption is in verse 7, yes. Lavished, which is in verse 8. And the last one is going to be in the next one. And I'm going to quickly just ask my brother to keep his mouth, his voice down. <laughs> Hold on. Alrighty. So I think those are the only words. Yes. Okay. So we have blessed, predestined, adoption, redemption, and lavished. And again, these are words that I'm picking because these are words that I personally wanted to define. But I would even say you could circle blameless, holy. So holy and blameless are both in verse 4. So I would even circle the, those if I you know, wanted to. Forgiveness would be a good one to circle trespasses would be a good one to circle wisdom insight mis like it really just depends on what you personally want to define what you personally um find pops out at you that's what you define there is no set rule to this method of studying it's just free will studying the word of god and allowing the holy spirit to lead you to circle or underline or whatever the case may be so let's go. I am probably going to write these definitions on a post-it note just because there's not enough space. So that's why I like to keep post-it notes around. So we're going to start off with blessed. So blessed, the Greek word is here. <laughs> and it basically means made holy in reverence of, worthy of praise. So we're going to write blessed. We're going to box that. Made holy.
worthy of praise. The next word is predestined. So predestined, the Greek word is right here. And it means to determine, appoint, or decree beforehand. Moving on to adoption. Here is the Greek word for that, and it basically means to take a child by choice, voluntarily as your own, as a child into the, the sorry, as a child into the divine family. So. Next word is redemption. Here is the Greek word for that, and it means to liberate on the receipt of a ransom. I'm probably going to redo this whole sticky note later because I don't like the way it's coming out. <laughs> and the last word is lavished. Here is the Greek word for that. And it means to abound, confer a thing abundantly upon one. So now we just go in with colors. So I'm going to use predestined this green. I'm going to use this kind of yellowish brown color for adoption. I'm going to take this lime green and circle lavished. And box it in the same color. Let's take a Super Tips highlighter. I'm going to take this for Blessed. I just love that blue. It's so pretty. Um, and then I'm going to use mm, Yellow for Redemption. Which is another Super Tips. I mean... Why did I just say super tips? <laughs> Sharpie highlighter. Okay. Oopsie, sorry.
going back, now I'm going to start underlining. So, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. So, I'm going to underline who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. So basically that speaks of the kind of blessings that we have as well as the location of where they are. So our blessings are every spiritual blessing and they're located in the heavenly places. That's basically telling us that God's resources for us are there 24-7 to tap into. And this is a certainty and assurance for our blessing from God, which we can only receive in Christ. So our blessings are not the material things in this world. A lot of people say I'm blessed because, you know, I was able to afford a coach bag or I'm blessed because I could get these Louis Vuittons, you know, but um, that's not really showing that you're blessed. Your spiritual blessings are what show how blessed you are. Um, and they also reside in higher and more secure places. They're not going to be here on this earthly plane. They're going to be up above in heaven. So I think that's important to know. I am going to write um, hmm. blessings. This was probably going to go over an hour because <laughs> I'm looking at the time now. Blessings are not material. Uh, they are resources. From God. Available 24-7. Certainty and assurance. That we receive them. But only through Christ. And if you guys need me to repeat something, just let me know. I have no problem doing that. I'm going to go in with this mount liner and this gorgeous purple. Verse 4 says, He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world. And also, we should be holy and blameless before him. So that's what I have underlined for verse 4. So going back to he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. Basically, we were picked by God before he created the world. So those blessings were already ours to possess. They were something that was already ordained for us. And if you go to Romans 8 and 28, um, let me grab my nook. So I can read that, and um, I do have a lot of cross-references. I won't always read them on screen, but I do find it helpful to read. So I'm just going to open up the Holy Bible app on my nook and go to Romans 8.28. And I'm reading from the New King James translation, um, but it says that, we know that all things work together for God. I'm sorry. We know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. So we are we are called before um, we were ordained beforehand. We were created by God. And then the next cross reference is going to be first Peter one and 20. And that says, he indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. 
So what I'm going to write is that, I'm going to put the note here. We were picked by God before creation. Blessings already owned. That we should be holy and blameless before him. So chosen not only for salvation, but we were also chosen to be holy. Um, in his presence, we are saints. And as we define, saints are dependent on his presence and fulfillment is found from God and we rest in him. So in his presence, we are saints and without fault because of his love. So even though we make plenty of mistakes, and I know I make mistakes um, all the time, we're still considered holy and blameless before him because of christ because we are now dressed if you will in christ's love in the blood of christ we are looked at as holy and blameless so i'm gonna write not only chosen for salvation which we know obviously his chosen people are saved through christ um but also for holiness. And that's why I said that if this was me, um, if I were you guys, I would also define holy and blameless for that purpose. But let's put some color on here because my eyes are starting to go. Going to verse 5, it says, In love, he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ. So I'm going to underline predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ. Basically, we have a relationship with our God, one of a father and a child. We are brought into a divine, divine family through Jesus Christ. So one thing I want to mention is that I never understand other religions. Um, and I'm not bashing them, of course, but I never understand their, you know, other religions and their gods because they don't have that kind of familial relationship. They can't go to their God um, and ask them for something. You know, we have a God that we can go to, that we can relate to. He's our father. He's our friend. He is a comforter. He's a provider. He's a protector. He's our lover. Like he is everything and more to us. And um, we have that relationship, but you can only have that relationship through his son. I will never understand people who say they believe in God, but don't believe in Christ because you cannot have a relationship without his son. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Um, if you don't believe in his son, then I feel like you're living in the Old Testament times with the Old Covenant. And that Old Covenant was obviously flawed. No one can abide by that Old Covenant. It's just impossible to live by it. And I don't like when people say, oh, I live by, you know, the Ten Commandments. But there was more than Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments are like the great commandments that we all know. But there were way more commandments than that. Like, men should not live in the same house with a woman when she is on her cycle because it was considered unclean at that time in the old testament so if you're telling me that you don't believe in christ and that you have a relationship with god i just i don't see how that works you have to have that through his son who died for your sins who died for us to be free and have that relationship with christ so i am going to write that we have a relationship um where do i want to put that <laughs> Uh, this is when post-it notes come in handy. So this is verse 5. So I'm going to write V5. I also have cross-references for that. So I'll read those to you guys um, in a second. But we have a relationship. With our 
God. A family tie. Only through the Savior. The cross references for that are going to be John 1 and 12, which I will read that to you guys. So John 1 and 12 says, But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become the children of God to those who believe in his name. And that's in reference into as long as you believe in Jesus Christ, you are now a child of God. You are now in that family. The next cross reference I have is Romans 8 and 29. Which says, for whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So because we were already predestined by God. He already knew that we would have a relationship with his son, which would now allow us to be among the brothers and sisters of Christ. And then I have 2 Timothy 1 and 9. Yes, I definitely can. Give me one quick second to read this uh last translation translation this last cross reference so um second timothy 1 and 9 it says who has saved us and called us with a holy calling not according to our works but according to his own purpose and grace which we was which was given to us in christ jesus before time began so i'm going to underline i'm going to use this gorgeous bright hot pink more like a neon pink really but um yeah so i don't know the exact um scripture and i'm gonna actually find that exact scripture and post it up in the group but somewhere in the old testament it talks about how when a woman is on her menstrual cycle that it is um unclean for a man to live with her in that time like in the same place so the man would basically have to leave her and go live somewhere else for that time being and you know um, I can understand it in a sense, but I don't understand it either. Um, it's, it's a weird concept that they had in the Old Testament times, um, which will never make sense to any human possible. But yeah, if she was on her cycle, he had to leave, period. It didn't matter if that was his wife, his mom, his cousin, his sister. It was considered unclean at that time, so she, he was not able to stay with her. And if he did, that was a sin. So... Oh, so that was Leviticus fifteen nineteen through 33. Thank you. <laughs> so if you go there, actually, let me write that down myself. Leviticus. Wait, let me see it. Fifteen nineteen to 33. If you guys want to read up on that. So hopefully that helped, okay? Let me know if that helped or if it made sense. <laughs> but um, that is a scripture you can go to to read up on that one. All right. Where was I? Okay, verse 7, right? Because I'm skipping verse 6, yeah. So I'm going to go on to verse 7. And let me know if this is making any sense to you guys. If it's not making any sense, if you have any questions, comments, just... Type away and I'll definitely answer them. Again, I'm a little rusty. It's been a minute, so bear with me. When we start chapter two, I'll be back on a roll with this. But um, going on to verse seven, it says, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace. And I'm going to underline this whole thing. So basically what this is saying is that in Christ, because of his sacrifice, because of him willingly, voluntarily going to the cross for us and bearing our sins, we have been forgiving of our sins and given spiritual abundance that we have access to at any point in time. 
Um, so basically, there is no redemption outside of Jesus and his redeeming blood. Like, it's just not possible. And redemption basically always implies that a price was being paid for the freedom that is purchased. That price was his blood, Christ's blood. And the ground of all grace is the reconciling death of Christ. So there is no forgiveness of trespasses. There is no riches of his grace without redemption through his blood none of that would be possible we would still be living again like i said before in old testament times like that the old covenant is what we would still be living in if it wasn't for christ and him dying on the cross for our sins so i am going to write verse 7 i'm i'm going to redo this whole note because i don't like this at all but um Because of Christ, Christ's sacrifice, I am forgiven and have spiritual abundance. Yes, 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 that's definitely it. That's definitely it. Yeah, he definitely is the bridge um, between everything. Jesus is the bridge. Like, that's why, again, I don't understand when people say they don't believe in Christ. Like, it just, it makes no sense to me when he is the bridge that pulls everything together. I don't ever understand. But, <laughs> yes, that's right. Okay. Um, is that all? I'm also going to write No Redemption. outside of Christ. So for verse 7, I basically put because of Christ's sacrifice, I am forgiven and have spiritual abundance and that there's no redemption outside of Christ. I need to understand that and you know, keep that in the forefront of my mind that I cannot have redemption anywhere else. Nothing else can redeem me but God in Christ. And what else I'm going to do is um, the part where it says according to the riches of his grace. It's basically not a small redemption or forgiveness by Jesus. This was basically immense because he gave of himself wholly and entirely for us. So I think that's amazing that we have so much only because that he wholly gave of himself without reservation. I love that. So going on to verse 9. It says, making known to us the mystery of his will. I just think that's uh, something important because God's will is revealed through Christ, which is fully disclosed to us for our understanding and application. His plan is no longer hidden from us. So again, back to the whole Old Testament versus New Testament. In the Old Testament, people really didn't know what God's plan was. Like, it really wasn't understood just because there were so many things going on at that time but through christ now we have a complete full understanding um of what his plan is it's all revealed in christ nothing else about his plan can be revealed anywhere else but through christ and i have another cross reference for that which is going to be romans 16 and 25 So I'm going to write God's plan revealed through Christ. Um, in Romans 16, 25 says, Now to him who is able to establish you according to my gospel in the preaching of Jesus Christ, 
according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret since the world began but now made manifest and by the prophetic scriptures made known to all nations according to the commandment of the everlasting god for obedience to faith to god alone be glory through jesus christ forever amen so again that is romans sixteen twenty five through 7 i'm um, 27 sorry so it's romans 16 25 to 27 which talks about um, his plan being revealed and the revelation of it through Christ Jesus. Moving on to verse 10. I'm going to underline where it says to unite all things in him. And God's plan is basically to bring all things in Christ in the fullness of time as either our savior or our judge. So everything on this earth, every person, every being, every nation, every land, like everything is to be united in Christ. Um, and that's either going to be him as your savior or him as your ultimate judge. And you can read about that in First Timothy 2 and 6, which I'll flip to. And that says, Who gave himself a, a ransom for all to be testified in due time. So, I'm going to flip this sideways. Hope you guys can see this and write my note, which is the beauty of a journaling Bible is that you can always write notes everywhere. Um, so God's plan is to bring all things in Christ. I'm going to use this yellow. I'm going to read 11 through 14. It says, In him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, so that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be to the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you in him you also, when you heard the word of truth and the gospel of your salvation and believed in him, were sealed with the promise, Holy Spirit. Verse 14 who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. So the only word and the final word that I'm going to define is counsel, which is in verse 11. Here is the Greek word for counsel. And it means deliberate wisdom, purpose, plan, or motive. Use this orange. All right, so in him we have obtained an inheritance. I'm going to underline. Basically, we became heirs with access because of Christ's sacrificial 
love. Um, and the cross reference for that is going to be Romans 8, 17. And that says, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. So, I'm going to write heirs with access. Then it says, predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. I'm going to underline that whole portion. Basically, he gives us deliberate wisdom to guide us in his direction and will, um, which a lot of us tend to ignore. I know there are times when I ignore <laughs> His deliberate wisdom and deliberate um, direction. It's just sometimes we try to do things on our own and it always fails. It never works like ever. Um, so I'm just trying to get to the cross reference. But yeah, so um, he gives us deliberate wisdom to guide us in his direction and will. So there are three aspects of his plan working together, which is his purpose, his counsel and his work. And the cross reference for that is going to be Isaiah 46 and 10. Which says declaring the declaring the end from the beginning and from the ancient times things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. So that talks about his counsel. We're gonna go to Colossians now one and twelve. And let me just put this here so you guys can see. So again, Isaiah forty six ten. This is gonna be verse eleven. So Isaiah forty six and ten. I'm now gonna read Colossians. 1 and 12 and that says giving thanks to the father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light so that talks about the inheritance that we have which i already mentioned and we're going to go now to hebrews six seventeen. And it reads, thus God determining to show more abundantly to the heirs of promise the immutability of, of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath. Again, I'm going to turn my paper sideways to write this note. He gives deliberate wisdom he gives deliberate wisdom to guide in his direction and will is what I wrote I'm going to box that And just connect it with a line. Just going to use this lime green. This isn't even lime. It's kind of like a pretty green. With the airs. This color. Skipping verse 12 and going to 13, it says, Believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. So basically, our faith in Christ allows the Holy Spirit to dwell within us. So without faith, the Holy Spirit does not have access to us. If you have faith, therefore you believe in Christ. And if you believe in Christ, therefore you now have the Holy Spirit. Because Jesus talked about how he was leaving and God was going to bring someone to us to comfort us. And that comforter obviously would be the Holy Spirit who now lives within us because we believed in Christ. So it's kind of like a cycle, if you will. So um, without faith the holy spirit does not have access to us 
His presence in our lives acts as a seal which indicates ownership, which assures us our inheritance as a child of God. Um, and that cross-reference for you guys is going to be 2 Corinthians 1 and 22. Not 1 Corinthians. <laughs> um, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22. And it says, Who has who also has sealed us and given us the Spirit, being the Holy Spirit, in our hearts as a guarantee. So I'm going to write Faith in Christ allows the Holy Spirit to dwell in without faith the spirit does not have access and I'm going to write the cross reference for that is 2nd Corinthians 1 and 22 And then for verse 14, the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it. So basically the Holy Spirit is a promise of our inheritance and an advance payment that guarantees all that we can possess. We are completely purchased by God through the resurrection and glorification of Christ. And the cross reference for that is going to be 2 Corinthians 5 and 5. So 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 5. And that says, Now he who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who also has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. So, I'm going to write... promise of inheritance and advance payment and I mean if I have the Holy Spirit and I know how the Holy Spirit works in my life I can only imagine when I go to heaven and inherit the actual treasures and um, blessings that God has for me. I know that it can and will not amount to the feeling of the Holy Spirit in me now. So I just think that's an awesome thing to look forward to. No, I don't want to use yellow. <laughs> I'm going to use this bright orange. You guys cannot hear that sound in the back. If you do, I apologize. <laughs> it is Friday. My fiance always comes over on Fridays. We take our son to school and then my son leaves after school to go to his house. Um, but now we are at the final paragraph. It is 11.04, so we should be done by 11.30. Um, and this one is titled Thanksgiving and Prayer. And I will say that the book of Ephesians, um, it has a lot of prayers that Paul does for the people of Ephesus. And I quite like his prayers um, quite often. Sometimes I will pray these out myself for myself or for people in my life. So um, reading it through, it says, For this reason, because... I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all saints. I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation and the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the work working of his great might 
verse 20, that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. 22, and he put all things under his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the, f the fullness of him who fills all in all. So really, I'm just going to pinpoint four verses. Um, the first one being verse 17. It says, May give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him. So first thing I'm going to underline. Um, going to verse 18, I'm going to underline the eyes of your heart enlightened. And is the hope to which he has called you going to verse 19 I'm going to underline the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe and then in verse 22 I'm going to underline put all things under his feet so those are the things that I'm underlining so I'm just going to quickly highlight not highlight, but use my colors. And then I'm going to write my notes. Let's use this mint. Nope. Green. Okay. So now that I have all that marked, I'm going to now just write my notes. So verse 17 may give you the spirit of wisdom and a revelation in the knowledge of him. So basically God can grant us wisdom and give us revelation to better um to better understand him. I put knowledge, that's wrong. Um, to better understand him. So we need to pray for a spirit of wisdom and revelation. That's something that I feel that needs to be done on a daily basis is to always pray that God give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation. We need to ask God to reveal himself to us because it's our desire. It's our, I'm sorry. We need to ask God to reveal himself to us. Hi, Miriam. Um, sorry, guys. So we need to ask God to reveal himself to us. It's, if it's our desire, um, we can have it. We're able to obtain it. And Christian life must be centered around the purpose to know God as he is the truth revealed by his word. Um, so the cross references for that is Isaiah 11 and 2. And that reads, the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the lord so that's something that we should probably pray for i think that's a great um prayer and again that is isaiah 11 and 2 and the next cross reference is colossians 1 and 9 for this reason we also since the day we heard it do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding so again this is letting us know that it's very important that we pray and ask for the spirit of wisdom and understanding because that's the only way that he'll be able to reveal who he is to us so Pray for spirits of wisdom and understanding God can grant it if I ask for it. Verse 18, it says, the eyes of our hearts enlightened. Um, so basically, eyes represent the heart. 
and that our heart should desire to understand so that we can be free of worldly thoughts and keep it on kingdom work and kingdom living. Many Christians have hearts that don't have eyes for God. So there are people who are what they call sleeping Christians who, you know, proclaim the gospel but don't live the gospel, proclaim the gospel but don't know God, proclaim the gospel but don't understand who he is and how he works and know the love of Christ. They don't know that. So we need to make sure that our heart should desire to understand it. And again, everything is always um, a heart. To, it's a heart thing. That's why God always says that he looks at the heart of man and not at the mind or the works or your thoughts. Like it's a heart thing because your heart basically initiates everything else to take place. Um, so good morning, Tanya. I'm going to put this sideways. Let me stick all this here. And I just dropped one of my highlighters. Here it is. Okay. So. Heart. Can you guys see this? Heart should desire to understand God. Then it says, is the hope to which he has called you. Trust and expect that his calling, God's calling, will always take place because of the promised inheritance that we have. So securing and enduring hope in life comes from simply knowing God has called us and has a specific calling for each of us to fulfill. That's okay, Robin. Good morning. Um, so yeah, I, I'll, I'll say that again. So is the hope to which he has called you. Basically, trust and expect that his calling will always take place because of the promise and inheritance that we have. So this isn't just like a simple hope. This is more of a securing and enduring hope in life that comes from simply knowing God. Um, so I'm going to write... Securing and... Oops. Enduring hope that comes from knowing God. And I like that they put both of those in the same verse because you can't really have that hope and really know unless you have um, your heart enlightened, unless you have the heart's desire to actually know God. Which, again, you can do that by asking him back in verse 17 to give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation of understanding and knowledge of who he is. And again, I just definitely would say I would recommend you praying Isaiah 11 and 2 over your life. That would be a good one to pray. But um, from knowing God. Let's color Okay, verse 19 says the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe. So basically the exaltion of Christ and God's power. Um, that's what that is. Basically, God's power goes beyond the magnitude of our minds. We serve a God of a living power who shows his strength on behalf of his people because it clearly says toward us who believe. So it's not saying that he won't show his power to unbelievers because he will. He can definitely use unbelievers to um, reveal his power. But more so he shows his strength to his chosen to his people to his called um to those who believe in him so this alone is the exaltation of christ and god's power 
because it's saying immeasurable greatness of his power. Again, I'm going to turn this sideways. So I'm just going to write exaltation of Christ and God. But um, more than that, it's showing that God's power goes beyond the magnitude of our minds. Um, what we think is not even probably a tenth of what he can do. Our minds can't even, you know, handle what it is that God's power can really do. What we see is probably just like, I don't even know, point one percent of his true power um and then to close off with 22 it says put all things under his feet so basically christ's resurrection placed him over all things on heaven and earth he was born to be over everything on heaven and earth and under earth you know so um He is placed overall. That's what I'm just going to say. And I have a bunch of cross references for that. So let me flip to them. Um, the first one is going to be Psalms 80. Sorry, Psalms 8 and 6. Psalms 8 and 6. And that reads. You have made him to admit. Sorry, you have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet. Going to Psalms 110 and 1. The Lord said to my Lord. So the Lord being God said to my Lord, which is Jesus. Sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. Which is basically putting all things under his feet. Going to Matthew 28 and 18. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Again, all things are under his feet. All things are under his command. Going to 1 Corinthians 15 and 27. For he has put all things under his feet. But when he says all things are put under him, it is evident that he who put all things under him is ex accepted going to heroes 2 and 8 it says you have put all things in subjection under his feet for in that he put all in subjection under his under him he left nothing that is not put under him but now we do know i'm sorry but now we do not yet see all the things put under him that's a very confusing scripture <laughs> Um, 1 Peter 3 and 22 reads, Who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, and angels and authorities and powers have been, haven't been made subject to him. I'll read that again. That is going to be 1 Peter 3 and 22. It says, Who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers having been being made subject to him. And then the final one is going to be Revelations nineteen sixteen, And it says, And he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So, that is basically it for chapter 1. If you take away all the talking that I did at the beginning, it's an hour that we did chapter one. It is completed now. Um, for me, I guess the key verse for chapter one would be verses seven through nine, which says, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will, according to his purpose, which he set forth 
in Christ. I feel like Ephesians chapter 1 verses 7 through 9 are the key verses for this because it's letting me know that um, one, there is no redemption outside of Christ, that I have access to many spiritual blessings, but it's only going to come through the blood of Christ by me having a relationship with him. And by having that relationship, I now have um, a familial bond with God and that I now have an inheritance because I'm now an heir of God, if that makes sense. But um, yeah, that is it for chapter one. Do you guys have any questions, comments, concerns? I know a lot of you guys probably came off the live and will watch it later. But um, if you do, just comment them down below, post them in the group. I'll definitely answer them. Do the ones uh, who are still on the live have questions, let me know. Before I log off. No questions? Okay, so definitely just comment below if you're watching this later on. Um, if you have like another question or personal question, you can just definitely um, message me here on the group and Instagram, however you want to do that. And I can answer your questions. But that is it for chapter one. We will do chapter two next week, Friday. And that has a total of 22 verses as well. And I think that's why I like the book of Ephesians because their verses are very short. Um, but it's much, very much jam-packed. So that is it for today. I thank you guys for studying along with me. Thank you to those who will be watching this later during the replay and later on on YouTube when I upload it. But um, other than that, that is it. And I'll see you guys for the next Bible study. Bye.